Hello, this is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Today I'm going to show you how to build acoustic panels. And here's a sneak peek of the finished product that we did for my friend Adriano Alaverdi. He's a platinum producer from the Toronto area. And really excited to show you everything we did here for his studio. This first video is going to be how to build acoustic panels. I've been building studios for over three years now and I've made over a thousand of these panels. I'm really excited to show you my whole process. And stick around, I'll show you step by step exactly how to get it done for your home studio. Thanks for watching. So I start with two by two by eight lumber and I measure at 48 inches, four feet. And I measure at both sides just to make sure that I'm accounting for any variance in the length of the wood. Sometimes it can be off by an eighth, a quarter of an inch. So I make sure that I measure from both sides and I align my saw blade in the center of both of those marks just to make sure that all of my cuts are uniform against each other. So we're gonna mark these out and we're gonna get all of our four foot lengths cut for today's build before we move on to the other lengths. Now here we're marking out the tops and bottoms of the panel frame. This is at 27 and a quarter inches. And my mark is at 27 and a quarter, but I align my saw blade to the right of my pencil mark. That allows me with the perfect fit for the acoustic insulation, the perfect internal dimensions of the frame. Uh, to nicely hold the acoustic insulation inside the frame. So once again, we're going to get all of these lengths cut, 27 and a quarter, and I'll have all of the cut sheet in the description of the video. We'll have all of the all of the details will be in the description. So I'm just siding down the boards here, making sure there's no warps or anything in these lengths before I screw the frames together. And I do two screws per corner that are pre-drilled to make sure that we don't split the wood. And I'll show you a close-up here of my technique here. I use the ground as a guide for the drill because the spacing that it provides me from the front of the frame leaves enough space so that once I put the frame on the router, that the router isn't going to catch on any of the screws and ruin the bit and could be dangerous. So this gives us the perfect spacing that allows for the router bit to do its thing. So two screws, these are three inch construction screws uh, to get through our two by two lumber. And there we go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all, all of these panel frames assembled before I clean up and get the router table all ready. So here we're starting up the router. This is a one and a quarter inch chamfer bit, 45 degree chamfer bit. You'll see the profile this leaves on the frame here. So this gives us that nice 45 degree edge, that beveled edge on our frames. Looks really nice once we upholster in the fabric. So the first pass, gets rid of most of the meat of the wood. And then the second pass makes sure that the whole face is uniform. So I do two passes on every side. And I'll go ahead and get the two lengths done first, and then I get the two shorter sides done. And I'll do that for all of the frames for the day before I move on to the next step, which is sanding. So here we go, just a little tidy up. And this is a close up of the profile that it leaves there. You'll see it leaves that nice 45 degree edge, comes together in the corners nicely, but it still leaves a little lip that we get off with the sander. That way we don't see that lip when we upholster on the with the front face of the frame. So I just sand that lip down. And I also sand down if there's any kind of burrs or if there's anything that's gonna catch the fabric. We wanna make sure that everything's Nice and smooth. That way when we stretch the fabric, nothing catches on any of those corners or edges. So this is the backing fabric. This is the rear fabric of the panel. Just a standard uh, poly cotton. And I'm gonna use the frame as a guide. And then I'll just cut down the length there. And that gives me the piece for the rear of the frame. And I cut all of those for how however many panels I need to make for the day. We do all of our prep. Um, at the same time, just for efficiency's sake, while you're building these frames. So I get each corner, I do two staples per corner, one on each side, and I'll lightly tension against that corner before I get the next one. And this is just a light, light tension, just to make sure that there's no wrinkles and that everything is lying flat. And we'll get that last corner there. And you'll see that everything's gonna lie 
There's not going to be any wrinkles. Everything's going to lie flat once this is all secured. So I get that first length secured in without pulling on anything. And then now I tension against that side. So I tension the opposite side and then tension the top and bottom. And once again, not pulling too hard, just making sure that there's no wrinkles and everything's lying flat. And once that's all secured, we're going to go ahead and just trim off the excess so that we're left with just the rear upholstered. And now it's ready for acoustic insulation. So this is Rockwool Comfort Board 80. This is the best choice for me that's available locally in my area that's readily available. Um, but depending on where you are regionally, if you're in the States, if you're in Canada or elsewhere in, the, elsewhere in the world, you might use a different product. This is just what I use locally here in Canada. But the same principles apply. So we're going to lay our frame down on the front fabric that I have laying face down on our table here. And I'm just getting that first corner. And then once again, just lightly tension against that first corner and I get the length side first and this is the factory edge of the fabric so I use that as my guide to make sure that everything's all straight when I get this first side of the panel secured and I'm once again we're just using one quarter inch uh, t50 staples just standard standard staples you can use a ham stapler that's how I used to do it when I was starting out uh, before I invested in the new metal stapler and we're just getting the opposite side. And I just like to lift up the fabric and use the weight of the frame to tension the fabric. Uh, uh, once again, just to make sure there's no, no wrinkles, everything lies flat. We you don't have to pull too hard. And if you do pull too hard, it can make the fabric stretch too thin uh, and the frame can become see-through, which we don't want. So here's a detail of how I do the corners, the corner upholstery. So I fold it in and I fold it over to make sure that nothing's exposed from the front face of the panel. That's the face that's gonna be visible. And this whole rear face is gonna be against the wall. You're not gonna see any of this. So I use three staples just to make sure that everything lies flat and is secure. And I will tension this from the center and just go ahead and secure that whole length. And once everything is secured, I can cut off the excess and that will leave us with our finished upholstered acoustic panel. And this frame does not have any mounting hardware on it yet. I will show you in a later video the whole install of this build. This build was really cool. We did a whole bunch of custom work. We did base traps. And that's what we're doing in the second video. We're going to show you the base trap build. But here is the finished panel in the black crushed velvet. Looks really cool. It's been a popular choice for my clients uh, for the past couple years. Just dusting it off here and I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of them upholstered, but here's a good look at it. I'm going to show you a walk around of how the light kind of affects it in different ways. It can either look really dark or really light, depending on how it's hitting in the light. Really stoked to be bringing you guys this content. This is an inside look to what I do as a recording studio builder here in Toronto, Canada. Um, the principles will be the same, but regionally your supplies might be different. If you have any questions, please type them in the comments. I'll be happy to get back to anyone who watches this video. This is the very first video I'm super stoked to be showing. Please subscribe. Stay tuned for episode two. We're going to do bass traps and a whole bunch of cool custom work. Peace out. It's Daniel. Thanks for watching. Take care.